Hello. So um, this is going to be a very quick video uh, discussing each of these um, the questions which uh, constitute your first section test. Um, just a quick gen a few general things. Um, this is Philosophy 101, section test number one. Uh, it's due on Monday, February 6th by 12 p.m. or noon. Um, and then there's a bunch of boilerplate from the, um, the, the, the course syllabus, um, just the the description of what section tests are in this case. Um, I chose to give you uh, five short answer questions worth four points each, totaling to um, a total of 20 points. Uh, everything I post to Moodle is fair game uh, for these. Um, it generally, uh, what I'm looking for is a, a paragraph of substantial analysis of the idea or section of text that um, I isolate and have you engage with here. Um, missed assignment policy, if you're going to miss this and it seems like you're going to miss this, send me an email and we can work something out. Um, if you have missed this because something happened at the last minute, send me an email within 12 hours of um, this due date. So you've got till midnight um, on the 6th to do that um, and we can work something out. The idea here is that extensions require discussion, um, though it's I, I fully understand that life happens. And um, I will work with you um, to get you to complete these kind of assignments. So um, I'm going to be real forthcoming with these extensions, but nonetheless, um, you have to work with me if I'm going to work with you. Um, assignment submission, uh, it, make sure you get your proper assignment uploaded to Moodle um, in a timely fashion. Uh, after the due date, um, these assignments block you uh, from submitting. Um, so again, it, in such a situation, that dis it requires a discussion about whether or not I'll accept the assignment. Um, generally, if it comes with any sort of explanation, uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty forthcoming with that. Um, it's also your responsibility to make sure it's uploaded properly. If I don't have it, I, I, I don't go chasing after you for this. Um, and make sure it's the right document and a complete document that are uploaded. Don't up upload your like psychology or physics homework or something along those lines, because that's not going to get you grades for your introduction to philosophy. So, um, so just just make sure I've got it. That's your responsibility. Um, and then finally, um, it's I know it's tempting because this uh, you're submitting online files and these are substantial questions about canonical texts and that sort of thing. Uh, essentially, an open book test to um, the the idea is that there's a zero tolerance policy on plagiarism in this course. So if you're using sources external to your own mind and the course textbooks uh, you must reference and what's more if you're referring to the course textbook tell me where to find it in the course textbook so um, anything that's not from your own mind it, tell me where you got it that's the idea um, zero tolerance policy on, on plagiarism means that um, it, if I find it I pass you on to the Dean of Students it's just what my contract stipulates um, and my course policy is you fail the course if you do it so at some point you should do a cost-benefit analysis with this and determine that your best probably either one to reference or two. Um, it, just write these assignments based on the textbook or what's floating around in your own head so um, that should be all pretty straightforward. Uh, the texts are the Plato's Five Dialogues, Just the Apology and the Credo, and Plato's Phaedrus, right? Um, I've listed off the, um, uh, the, the, the video material um, that you're responsible for, too. You'll find all of that um, and more, actually, on Moodle. Um, I've also posted um, my review materials uh, for Plato's Theory of the Forms um, and Plato's Theory of Recollection and Plato's uh, notion of the three kinds of love or kinds of relationship that he discusses. So um, you've got all of those resources for you. So you should be in a pretty good um, position uh, to answer these questions. Now, these are short answer questions, um, but uh, what I'm looking 
looking for is a substantial paragraph worth of analysis. Remember, these courses have to be writing intensive. Um, that's the little box that I need to fit in in order for your um, gen ed requirement and all of its cross-cutting capacities to be satisfied. So you, you're going to have to write. Um, so what I mean by a paragraph, this is just the definition of a paragraph. If you've got less than three sentences, you don't have a paragraph. So that is the bare minimum to satisfy the definition of a paragraph. Um, you know, it's, it's, I, I would expect that you would need probably a minimum of five sentences to answer any one of these questions. Um, the thing is, I'm giving you a rule of thumb um, with regard to uh, what I'm looking for here because each of you are going to write and explain yourselves differently. So um, it, some people will require a bit more in order to get these ideas across. Some people are very, very concise and uh, might use examples to illustrate uh, that sort of thing. If you're using an example, uh, it, your paragraph is going to be longer. Right. Uh, if you're being very, very concise, it's going to be a shorter paragraph, right? But that shorter paragraph has to have sort of a laser focus um, with regard to hitting the notions that I'm looking for for each of these questions. So um, it, it, that's that's it, just sort of a general rule of thumb. Um, if you don't have three sentences, you don't have a paragraph and I don't have a complete response. Um, if you give me the bare minimum and it doesn't address all of the ideas sufficiently, um, well, it, then your grade's going to reflect that, right? So the idea is give me a paragraph that answers the question until it's answered, right, is the idea. Um, four points each. Um, so, like, realistically, if you're just breaking this down, I might break it down in this fashion, right? It's You're making four points, right? You're making four um, assertions uh, with regard to this material. And it, it, so if you don't have four assertions, right, then it, you don't have full grades, right? So, um, so it starts off uh, with the question about the gadfly argument um, on page 35 of the five dialogues. Socrates, Socrates presents uh, an argument where he compares himself to a gadfly. Um, so the first thing you want to do is break down the metaphor. So in what respect is he like a gadfly and why is this important by his argument to the city state of Athens? Remember, he said, I, I was put on in this state uh, by the god as a sort of gadfly, right, upon the back of a great and noble yet sluggish steed, right, who bites it and shocks it to alertness, right? So, breaking down the metaphor, I want to know how, in what respect Socrates is like the gadfly, in what sense he is biting the, 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 the noble steed and um, in what sense the noble steed is sluggish. So the idea is, step one is unpack the metaphor. Step two for this question, so that's two points, right? Step two for this question, how might this argument be used uh, to support a case of, of, for freedom of speech and by extension freedom of the press? All right. So those are the two aspects. We discussed this extensively in class um, because really what he's, he's arguing is that these kinds of activities that he's engaging in are absolutely essential to the functioning of a democracy. In what sense is the, this the case? So unpack the metaphor and then use the metaphor to address uh, the notion of these protected rights. So um, that's the first question. Second question, in his fictional conversation with the laws of Athens, Socrates introduces the distinct but related notions of the social contract and tacit consent. Define each of these notions dis distinguishing between them. That's fairly straightforward. Define distinguish kind of thing. So um, it's, it's sort of, you've got two things, you've got four points, um, breaks down quite, quite nicely. Right. What's the social contract? And you might, in your discussion of the social contract, present, like I did when we discussed this, um, the various options within the context of this social contract. Right. 
and then it define and distinguish from that the notion of tacit consent, right? Um, it, it, so, nonetheless, right? That, that should be fairly straightforward. Now, on to Plato. Um, remember, I'm doing the distinction between Socrates and Plato here, right? Um, question three, briefly discuss the constitution of the soul. Um, it, it, he introduces this on page 30, what we must say about its structure kind of thing. So um, I, don't, I do not want you to engage with the argument for the immortality of the soul there. Like I said in class, one, it does, it's, it's a bad argument, and two, it doesn't demonstrate what Plato wants it to demonstrate. So it, it, put that in brackets and kick it aside constitution of the soul, what the soul is like, um, what the, the, the structure of the soul is. And remember, he gives you that metaphor of the chariot, uh, the chariot driver um, with its team of two winged horses. Right? So briefly discuss this, uh, the, the constitution of the soul, the structure of the soul offered by Plato at the start of Socrates' second speech. That's step one. How, by the argument offered in this speech, does platonic love bring harmony to the soul? And so if, remember, this is, this is three parts of the soul, three aspects of truth, and three verbs for love, right? So connect those up, right? And talk about how, it, to a certain extent, right, the soul is harmonized through platonic love because it's not through erotic love and it's not through the non-love relationship. So um, that's your task, right? That's at least one of the handy dandy things about platonic love. Four points, right? So um, question four. Uh, this is a very straightforward question, and what I want is a substantial sort of introduction to Plato's theory of the forms. We discussed this extensively in class. I've given the, the video material. Um, I've given you Plato's theory of the forms beginner kind of thing uh, via Moodle, and I've given you uh, the School of Life Plato on the forms um, as well. And right? so you should have lots and lots of um, it, it, it sort of substance behind your answer there. Um, it's, remember, this is probably the most important concept that we get from Plato. Right? So just give me a substantial introduction to that based on your understanding and based on what you've taken from our class discussions and the video material that I've, the extensive video material that I've offered for you. Um, and then finally, last question, briefly discuss Plato's theory of recollection. Remember, this is his epistemology. This is how we come to know uh, the forms. This is also an argument for the immortality, or at least the more durability of the soul. The soul must have pre-existed the body right, by this argument, right? um, and also by this argument. This is how, according to Plato, we come to a knowledge of the forms. Now, discuss uh, part two of that question. Discuss how platonic love brings us closer to knowledge of the forms, noting uh, the special character of beauty. Remember, um, I gave you the page reference in class. Um, I discuss it on the videos. Um, it, it, the, the beauty, right, is actually a form that has a special distinction that Plato outlines in, um, in the Phaedrus. Right, so, and this is, as the question suggests, related to Plato's theory of recollection. So, um, it, I want you to engage with that. So, four points for that, right? Two for the theory of recollection, and two for um, how well you acquaint yourself to uh, the love argument, right? Um, so, remember, there, there are at least really three things, but two th main things in terms of this argument that Plato presents as, you know, handy about this fourth kind of madness that's not necessarily bad, right? First, that it brings harmony to the soul. And then secondly, that it gets us closer to a knowledge of the perfect truth of the forms, 
All right, so really, if I'm asking questions about that, I'm going to ask you questions about uh, those two notions. All right? Really, I can't see passing anybody in terms of an understanding of Plato without uh, them demonstrating that they understand the theory of the forms. So um, that is that. If you have any questions, please um, get in touch with me. Uh, I'd be more than happy to discuss this material with you in greater detail. Um, it, remember, you've got class time to engage with me on this. You've got my office hours on Friday, and this weekend I'll make a point of um, being on top of checking my email. So um, I look forward to reading your responses. Have a good day, one for each of you.